Well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today is a special day. It is the anniversary of my ownership of a Porsche 911. This glorious 996 911 here. And I thought it was high time that we did a little recap on what a year's ownership has been like with this car. What have been the highs and lows? What it has cost me to run? How do I feel about it? Am I looking to sell it and move on to something else? All those things. So we're gonna look at all those things today. Before I forget, over on the automobile channel. Take a look at the, my new channel over there. I have a full review of the Alfa Romeo Stelvio and two very rare and very special Alfa 8Cs as well. So take a look at that. Meantime, this car is a 2003 Carrera 2 with a Tiptronic gearbox. It had about 25,104 miles on it when I bought it and I've done about 4,500 miles in the year that I've had it. Not a very high mileage, but we'll go into why that is. And mainly it's because the pandemic and things changed after I, immediately after I bought it. But I have to say, and this gives you a clue as to what's coming next, I've thoroughly enjoyed owning it. But let's take a look. I paid $26,500 for this car exactly one year ago. And the market has gone up since then. I think it has for all cars. So the renaissance of 996 prices, I'm not sure if that's going to hold when all this comes to an end. But nevertheless, I think in this condition now, you'd be looking somewhere between thirty dollars and $40,000, most likely closer to the 30000 end of things for a car in this condition with this mileage. And I have to say, I never tire of looking at it. I don't care what anybody says about those headlights. on the road I'm enjoying it as much as I ever have done actually as I mentioned earlier when you get into this thing it's just special it's low down it's a Porsche uh, and it's got those beautiful uh, rear windows of the coupe model which I absolutely love I always wanted a coupe one uh, I honestly just for my own opinion cannot see why anybody would buy a Targa no offense to anybody that has they still drive just as well as this and you of course you get the the sunroof, the much larger sunroof. But for me, for my first Porsche, the classic shape of the coupe was what I wanted most. Most of all, actually. Uh, I would have had a convertible, uh, but I would have felt, uh, you know, as a first Porsche trying to buy into the heritage of the thing that, you know, they race them in coupe form, convertible, it's not really the same thing. Maybe I will do one day though. Uh, and certainly you know my thoughts about Boxsters, I like those as well, so maybe there's one of those in my future coming up. But as far as the 996 is concerned, when the shape of the coupe comes into it from the side, you know, let's ignore all those comments about the front of the car, we'll get to those in a minute. Uh, it's a classic 911, and in fact, from the back, I think it's one of the prettiest 911s that in fact there is you know that there are. I think it's a really good looking car from the back and I think overall the looks of this car uh, it's really coming into its own I think. I think they're uh, you know they're, they're not the unloved 911 that they used to be uh, anymore and you've probably heard millions of people say that already and it's becoming a bit hackneyed and boring already so perhaps we'll stop there on that front. But inside this car uh, it's still and driving it it still is that great blend that all 911s have, or at least the Carrera ones. Remember, the Carrera ones are the usable uh, 911. I suspect if you go uh, for a GT3, uh, that those are a, a different proposition on the road, much harder, much firmer. But for the Carrera and this particular one, it's so usable. I get into it, uh, I can use it for short journeys, or, as I'm about to find out when I drive down to Atlanta to meet James from Auto Amateur uh, in a couple of weeks' time, and you'll be able to watch that on this channel shortly. Uh, there'll no doubt be a link on the screen up here somewhere by now, by the time you guys watch this. But even long distance, when I've done you know a fairly long distance journey, the seats are comfortable, the suspension is not rock hard, it's a very usable car day to day. Now, Let's get on to the Tiptronic gearbox. Now, if you haven't seen my video on that, there's another link somewhere up here. 
or is it up here? I'm not sure. I always get that wrong whether I use my right hand or my left hand, but there'll be a link up here somewhere uh, to my Tiptronic video. I slightly regret my choice, and I'm just being honest here, uh, because I bought this car, and again, if you watch one of my videos, uh, in fact, why did I buy a 996? It's one of the first videos I did when this car was delivered shortly, you know, shortly after that in April last year. Uh, I bought it to actually use as a commuter car, and I am not using it as a commuter car. In fact, I've never used it as a commuter car because more or less the week that I bought this, precisely one year ago, uh, we went straight into lockdown. And those days in the office that I was doing, didn't do it even once when I bought this car. So the reasons that I bought this car are slightly different to the reasons that I now own it. But do I regret it that much? So there are days when you want the manual gearbox, right? You just want to go out and hear the engine roar when you want to hear it roar and just the pleasure of a manual gearbox. I get that. I'm not, you know, uh, uh, a Tiptronic jihadi that, you know, you've got to have. Um, a, tr a Tiptronic gearbox, it's the be all and end all. It absolutely isn't. It's a very good torque converter uh, automatic gearbox and you should not be uh, afraid of that. You should not think, oh, it's the poor man's choice. Uh, it's not, although Tiptronic cars do go for a little bit cheaper than uh, the manual boxes. So I slightly regret it, but I have to say, you know, I've been driving it now here on this video uh, and I don't mind it at all. Maybe it's my age as well. I'm going to be 50 in a couple of weeks. <sighs> but, you know, I have a manual sports car. My old MG, not that old, I suppose, 94 has a manual gearbox, has a V8 in it. So I get my fix of sports cars with nice engines, nice sounding and changing gears when I want to. Uh, this car, I love just cruising around in it. And when I want to push on, I can push on. Uh, and and, the, and the, the tip trite doesn't really hold me back on that front. So inside the car, it is just tapping some of the cheaper plastics down here, a little bit cheap in places and here on the on the horseshoe bit at the front here uh, they could do better but uh, you know who cares who cares <laughs> if I wanted to and maybe I will actually over time I can change those I would like actually to have at least the middle bit here which is full of cheap plastic I'd like to have that reupholstered in black leather actually rather than go the carbon fibre route. Uh, as my colleague, uh, James Morto Amateur, is wont to do, uh, I that's not for me, I don't think. Um, I think it looks great, actually, but it costs a fortune to do real carbon fibre, so I'm not going to do that. Otherwise, amendments, uh, alterations, upgrades, I haven't done too many of those. I have done really not very much. I've changed out the CD holder, I've changed up the centre console so I don't have a, uh, uh, you know, just a cigarette, uh, an ashtray anymore. I have a, a usable uh, bin. I've also put in a Vantru N4 uh, dash cam in it and it has three cameras, one forward looking, one rearward looking and one in the cabin camera. Uh, now you can look at Nick Murray's video for details of that. I'm not going to do a review on that because frankly I came across this on Nick's channel and I thought he did an excellent review and I gave it a shot and for about $300 I've got a great camera, I've got GPS on it, uh, I'm pleased with the uh, you know the, uh, the quality of the video on it. So anyway that's that, I've fitted that myself. <laughs> Uh, which is a major achievement for me, um, but it really wasn't very difficult. Oh, oh within that 300 I also got a hardwiring kit which goes into my OBD2 port as well. Uh, and I thought I'd do that because I'm coming up for a long drive and I just thought there's an idiot that crashes into me and uh, you know, like I've got all the method there of showing that it was his fault, not mine. So other modifications, look, I need to do something with the exhaust. I have been toying with the idea of just getting rid of the mufflers and buying a, uh, you know, a, a kit just to just to uh, you know have a, a muffler delete kit. Fab Speed do one, 
uh, I've been thinking about that. Uh, I haven't done my IMS bearing yet. Uh, yeah, 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 I know. Uh, I should do my IMS bearing. But the problem has been money. Um, there isn't quite as much slushing around the Reed household Porsche fund uh, at the moment. So that has to wait. That just has to wait. With children at college, uh, you know, it just has to be what it is. So I'm going to get to that. That's definitely going to be done. But, you know, meantime, I have done 29,466 miles what this car has. Uh, and, you know, it's running very, very smoothly. Driving of this car, nothing's gone wrong. Uh, so let's also talk about what it has cost me so far. Now, the answer to the question, and I'll just cut straight to the chase, is really nothing. <laughs> Which is, you know, everybody talks about 996s as if they are on the verge of blowing up and grenading and going wrong every five minutes. This hasn't gone wrong once. Uh, and all I've had to do uh, was give it an oil change, which cost me $275 at my local independent uh, place. There's a video on that uh, somewhere in my catalog as well at SST Danbury. Uh, it is gonna go back there next week, all being well, to have the same thing done. Whilst it was in there last time, I also had a problem with my indicator not cancelling. Uh, they are prone to do that. These indicator stalks are a bit plasticky and there's something in them that snaps. Uh, in fact, it did cancel. It wouldn't actually stay on. You had to hold it on uh, for it to, uh, you know, for it to indicate. That was quite a lot more money than the oil change, oddly enough, uh, because it's so fiddly to get to. Uh, the parts were quite expensive as well. I had proper Porsche parts. I didn't go for a second-hand one. That's not really my style. Uh, you know, I like to have things that work and they're going to last another period of time. Uh, and that was about $600. I'll put the real numbers up on the screen uh, here. Uh, so my last bill was sort of, you know, 875 or something. Uh, but only, you know, 275 or so of that, real numbers are on the screen, uh, is, uh, is the oil change, which is all it really needed. Um, so hopefully there's another thing I need to get fixed this time as well, which again these cars are prone to to do. On the right hand side of my uh, fascia here, there is an oil pressure indicator. The sender unit keeps failing and it keeps showing that I've got zero oil pressure. I don't have zero oil pressure, uh, it's just that the sender unit's failed. It's I think a $60 part or something, so I'm going to get them to do that as well. Um, other than that, uh, if you remember from my uh, uh, winter tyre video, I bought myself, when I bought the car, a set of winter tyres and winter wheels. And I did that from Tyre Rack. They had some wheels that looked a bit like turbo twists uh, in 17 inches, uh, which was one inch smaller than my regular wheels, my regular sort of silver wheels. I'm not sure what they're called, those Porsche wheels. I'll find out try and put that on the screen as well uh, and they did a package um, and that's come in really handy actually uh, I'll put the price up on the screen of that when I bought it but quite good value I thought because it's allowed me to use this car during all the winter uh, now yeah okay salty roads and all that I keep my cars pretty clean you know are they they are kept clean I wash them have them washed I should say I don't wash them myself throughout the winter uh, and you know I'm not too worried about the salt I think you can worry over worry about things and you know if you want to keep a car as if it came out of the showroom um, you know don't let it ever leave the showroom otherwise what's the point just enjoy it as I say I've probably got fewer years ahead of me than I do behind me so um, life's for living people get out there and use it and you know take the plastic off your furniture and just uh, get out there and use it. So um, that was a really only the only other major investment into this car and it's allowed me to use it throughout the winter in Connecticut in snow as well. Uh, it hasn't really got the ground clearance to uh, you know navigate deep snow but that really wasn't the point. The point was for me to be able to use the car in you know, icy or very cold conditions or light snow and not 
having six foot of snow, well even an SUV will get through, that's the, the realistic expectation there. So, uh, all in all, I have been delighted with this car. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the film, the video, uh, I'm a year in, normally when I'm a year in I'm getting itchy feet, thinking, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, what are we going to do next? I also reflect on what I could have had at the time, and I'm still glad that I bought this. I would not have been as, ha as happy in a Jaguar XK. It would have been a nice car, but hey, look, where the, look what I've done with this car and the places it's got me into uh, in terms of having friendships with people, in terms of doing this YouTube thing, which, you know, hopefully there's somebody out there watching this. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, this point isn't valid. Uh, it's got me you know, cars and coffee, Porsche events. Uh, I've built a relationship with my local Porsche dealer. Thanks, Porsche Danbury. If you would like a new Porsche or a really good used Porsche, I'm not contractually bound to say this, so I don't have any kind of contract with them. Go there. They're really good guys. Really been impressed with those guys. Super, super good. Porsche Danbury. Um, so I, I look back on, on, on my decisions at the time. I've been lucky with the IMS, or have I? I don't know. Yeah, you can go bang and it's really bad, but it you know, hasn't done, and I don't know how often they do. And there's lots of different schools of thought on that, and I will get it done as well. Um, but it hasn't done, and I look back on this decision, and I'm a thoroughly happy person. Uh, I'm still, even now, enjoying this car. Uh, it is a thoroughly nice car to drive. It is modern enough. I don't want satellite navigation in my car. I don't want a great big screen in my car because every two years they go out of date and you're driving uh, obsolete technology. Don't want it. Uh, so I'm perfectly happy with this car and I'm gonna leave the video there. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I am always available for questions. So down below, you can leave a comment or my email address is videocarclub at gmail.com. Write to me, lots of people do, uh, and uh, for what it's worth, they even take my advice sometimes. Uh, Dave, with the green 911, I'm talking about you. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, feel free, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's get a community going here. That was all my, always my intent with this YouTube channel. Uh, let's enjoy our stuff together and, uh, and uh, be part of each other's uh, you know, lives to an extent. But look, thanks for watching, really appreciate this. Uh, please stay watching. If you like this kind of content and all the other stuff I do, uh, feel free to subscribe. I mean, that's what I'm here for. Come on, come and join the gang, come and join the club. You're extremely welcome. If you've enjoyed this particular video, uh, don't just hover over that like button, smash it. Smash that like button. Uh, that's what we like you to do. Otherwise, I will very much look forward to seeing you guys